faster than the others. There's just a lot of fuels. And number two, the, the grazing, and there's a lot of ranches they want to let the animals graze. And uh, the, the, the fire doesn't start just burning tree. You can torch a tree and not burn. But the grass is the start, and it's something uncontrollable. So when the animals graze, they can graze it down to zero, and that will help us. So we have to find a solution. Uh, you want to come and tell me not to do what I have to do, but you want to burn the forest yourself. That's, I think that's a problem, big problem right now. Um, private properties should burn, do a, a, a controlled burn, absolutely. But I don't want any of the uh, public lands to, to do this thing, to do controlled burn, because that's, that's the problem. You want to control our way of life, and you, in the last 20 years we have all these problems because of the uh, control and the logging. And uh, of course, there's, there might be over logging, but there, is, there should be some reasonable logging, thinning, and all the other um, other methods and burning and burning. Not just, you don't want to make it long, but you want to burn it. It doesn't make sense. And also, that one and all thing, also, also I, don't, I think should, that should be put out first because um, this, this last two months has been really extensive and it's hard to control. But in the winter time, um, rain is always raining, and, and, and at all times, it's Better is better, and there is control burn. One hour shouldn't stop it. That's a, that's not a smart idea. And um, uh, again, um, public lands uh, should be able to burn. We have to let them burn. And I don't think that the fire season has to stop them because there's uh, there's a, like there was a fire season June first, and nothing could burn on June first. So there should be extended for control burns. Uh, so if you, if you let people to burn, you, you can say it's safe to burn, and you should let it to burn any time. Um, maybe not in the very, very bad times, but after the fire season to go to effect also. So, thank you. Thank you. Thornstein. Watershed. 
watershed, and I shudder to think of what would happen if Mount Ashland were um, drinking water, quality of life, the Ashland Trail Network, the things that draw people here are our natural environment, and we need to protect them as soon as we possible. So I support, I'm here to support personally and for my interaction with those in the uh, tourist economy and outdoor recreation uh, world, I'd like to support the 24 hours standard.
stands to provide important leadership. Working together is critical to shaping a comprehensive approach to managing smoke from prescribed fire. We must account for wildfire impacts on the economy, on community, community health and well-being, public health and safety, and on the ecology. And we need to think about these things both in the near term and the long term while we're making decisions. We re really appreciate the work of the Department of Forestry and Environmental Quality to develop these proposed revised rules for the Oregon Smoke Management Plan and the effort that's going into balancing uh, the need for increased prescribed fire use with a more proactive approach to public health mitigation and communication. We support the proposed uh, rules, alignment with the EPA, a uh, 24 hour ambient air standard uh, for PM 2.5, and including the 75% buffer, 25% drop from those to define an intrusion. However, we continue to have significant concerns with the addition of the one hour PM 2.5 threshold to define smoke intrusions because it curtails the ability of communities in fire prone forests to complete critical prescribed fires to reduce wildfire risk. For this reason, our support for the proposed rules with the one hour threshold is subject to the adopted rule including the proposed opportunity for communities to receive an exemption to the one hour smoke threshold and that exemption process needs to be realistic and achievable for communities given the realities of local capacity and resources to develop and implement such a plan. In conclusion, it's important to recognize that long-term air quality, long-term public health, are inextric inextricably linked to the long-term health of Oregon's forests. Fortunately, the science is clear that tree thinning followed by a prescribed fire can significantly reduce future wildfire severity and the risks posed by extreme wildfires to forests, to communities, economies, public health and safety. So I want to thank you for the opportunity to provide these comments from the Nature Conservancy, and I look forward to working with you all in implementing the rules when they're adopted. That's it, Benjamin. And uh, my comment is regarding the, the forest fires and the coordination between the Oregon Department of Forestry and the United States Forestry Service. And um, the idea, I, I've been hearing, talking to people randomly about um, men uh, and women who have wanted to put fires out and have been told they can't. I've talked to loggers who've been told that if they put a fire out, they will be put in jail. Um, I, I personally know of uh, one person who had a helicopter ready to drop water on a fire that was small and was told not to. Those are, uh, there's, um, I've talked to Oregon Department of Forestry Service workers who have said they've been on the line between them and, uh, um, and the U.S. Forest Service land and they cannot cross that line to put out a fire on the other side. Um, the coordination, it's kind of like the uh, coordination between the fire department and the, the police department at the World Trade Centers. You know, they didn't coordinate and people died. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't see that coordination. And, and these rumors are spreading all over the place. Some of them are probably not true, but we're not hearing any of it. We're, and, and when I made my comment, there was a lot of quiet regarding uh, the way that the uh, U.S. Forest Service manages the fires. And to do a fire in the middle of, uh, to allow a fire to burn to some degree when it can be stopped. And evidently there are fires that can be stopped that are not being stopped. Um, and to allow that to happen is to allow a prescribed burn in the middle of the summer. And that's just crazy. Uh, to whatever degree that's happening, it should be stopped. And I understand that some of it can't be, but that's okay. And that is a part of the DBQ issue because uh, when those fires are allowed to burn, then obviously there's smoke in the air and we're all suffering from it. So uh, it would be nice to, first of all, understand what is the policy of the U.S. Forest Service to make that clear and translucent to all the people. And if there are good reasons for it, let's hear it. Let's put it out on the public forum. But let's make sure that everybody knows what is the policy of the U.S. Forest Service. The Mail Tribune made some comments about how the U.S. Forest Service is now going to fight these fires the way that we are doing them, which in, in, in means that they weren't beforehand either. So there's been some agreement even officially that they weren't fighting the same way. So if we could all find out what the true story is, that'd be awesome. That would make us all feel better too. Thanks.